I might as well start this review by addressing the elephant in the room. The subject of my today's review, animation slash alchemist area, has done some heinous stuff while I was gone. First one being quite disrespectful towards Imonga and Mega Animazing, who are involved in Inanimate Fight Out. And considering how Mike was one of my friends, I felt quite disgusted. But not as disgusted as for the next thing he did. Pretty sure everyone knows this story, so I will just summarize shortly. Area has been outed for recording little girls hiccuping. Need I say more? I mentioned all of this at the start, as some of you might think that his bad behavior might impact the review of his shows. There are people who separate the art from the artist, like when it comes to movies by Woody Allen or, if you want a more relevant example, Harry Potter. However, I can guarantee you that my views on Starfield, Battle for Object Destination and Earthquake will not be affected because of Arya's weird kinks. Because I always thought his shows were bad. Look, he was a decent voice actor and quite good animator. At one point I even hired him to make a scene for Last Object Standing, which I now regret it. And even Inanimate Insanity hired him as an animator, which seems like a destination for controversial people. When you look at the first glance at his shows, they don't seem to be that bad. However, the more you get into the episode, you start notice one major flaw that ruins all of these shows altogether. Writing. His object shows are like 2021-22 Manchester United squad. At the first glance, it looked great with talents such as David Tahea, Bruno Fernandes, Paul Pogba, Rafael Varane, Jaden Sancho and Cristiano Ronaldo. Those guys are like audiovisual department and creativity of those shows. But then we have people like Luke Shaw, Fred, McTominay, Lindelof, Phil Jones, Paul Pogba and the worst football captain in Manchester United history. Harry Maguire. All of them fucking up everything good that the club did this season, resulting in their worst performance in Premier League history. That pretty much sums up the writing area of animation area. I would also say that he is like the owners as they messed up the club royally, but judging by what he has done, he is more like Mason Greenwood. Okay, enough with soccer analogies. Let's see if these shows are as bad as I remembered. Let's start off with Starfield, his very first show. Has anyone remember Star from Challenge to Win? No? Well, I don't blame you. Her only interesting thing was her movement. So imagine cloning her into seven different multicolored stars with one dimensional personality. At least that's what I saw in the remake of the first episode, as all the remaining episodes have been deleted. Well, I guess that means I can move on to the other show. <laughs> Oh, it's a show about stupid stars! After searching for re-uploads, I came across the video called Starfield Back Online, which has all original episodes stitched together. Unfortunately, we are going to have to deal with some bad audio quality and this dreaded watermark. You told me about it 20 times already. Okay, you've asked for this. But let's give it a first shot. Starfield is a non-competitive style show, released somewhere in 2015. It doesn't have a narrative story like for example The Nightly Manor, but instead it's just a short series, sort of like EEE -E -E shorts. The cast of stars are as follows. We have a white star that is obviously evil, a yellow star that is the most normal of them all, orange star that is a crybaby nerd, a red star that is also evil, two green stars that one of them is a pretty boy, while the other is pretty girl. Blue star, that sounds like blue planet. Gee, turn that from upside down, grass colored star. Why is this happening? Couldn't this happen on the previous episode? And poopy brown star, that is random. Despite a small cast, we only really see a half of them. One of the green stars only appears for like 10 seconds in episode 3, while white star, red star and shit star are nowhere to be seen. Then again, I don't think it is a big loss. What about the shorts themselves? Other than the intro, there are only 3 episodes. One where they are making a let's play channel, one where I go to the mall, 
and the finale when they are making the movie. Kind of random, don't you think? Let's Play episode starts with a yellow star making a YouTube channel, with Green Girl being overly happy about it and Orange being a... complete opposite from the previous episode. It went from being a crybaby bitch to just a bitch. They start playing Minecraft, they were on a lonely island, Creeper killed them and... Shut up, there's a Creeper coming. We don't have swords, how will we protect ourselves? Uh... That's the episode. I don't even understand the joke here. Was them dying in 10 seconds in Minecraft a joke? Was them starting at the small island a joke? Or Yellow constantly refreshing a channel to see one subscriber a joke? I think it was probably that. Moving on. Next episode starts with Green Girl and Blue gossiping about the Red Star sucking his thumb. I heard that Red Star was like sucking his thumb earlier today. Ooh, gossip. Despite them not having any fingers. And then they decide to go to the adventure in the mall. They take another green star because reasons. And I forgot to mention the lip syncing in the first three episodes. They only use two same assets for talking. The big ass green and open yelling mouth. It doesn't look good and it kind of ruins the decent star animation. Back in the mall. Green star is being a coomer while other star smashes her makeup on her face. You look alright. Cool. Boy, boy mates, welcome to the food court. How can I help you? Oh yeah, this show was made in 2015. Blue ordered a salad, green girl frappuccino, and other green star nothing, and was asked why he was here. I won't have anything. Then why are you here? That was a fucking punchline! Final episode starts off with them leaving them all, so at least there are some continuity here. OS, as in orange star, appeared with his deformed pointing hand and told about other stars that they should make a movie, that they don't know what it would be about. And for crying out loud, some of the ideas are brain that stupid. So, what do we need first? That would be an idea. Mm, how about all of us dance on camera for the whole movie? That would be fun. Sorry, but that's not exactly good. Alright, fine. So, do we have any more ideas? I envision a sequel. Uh, a sequel to what? Uh... I think this is how the most of the object shows were made back in the day. Blue Star gave a good idea of making a musical, but they had to sacrifice the audio quality in exchange. Nickel? There's an idea! What should it be about? Okay, um, rainbows and unicorns and... I'll consider... Then, White Star finally appears and shows the picture of the tank. And the dialogues goes completely to shit, as I cannot understand a fucking word from the orange star. The episode ends with the script being tossed out, and then it abruptly ending mid-sentence. Don't know if I should blame Aria or the person re-uploading this, but there's a fitting ending overall. Starfield is like one of those live-action shows that Cartoon Network used to produce. It was different at the time and fair play for trying something new. Unfortunately, like with those live-action shows, it was not funny, not entertaining, and creators reverted back to his own way after publishing this film for viewers to see. Are there any positives for Starfield? Well, it's too better than the game. This is a bucket. Dear God. There's more. No. So, here's the deal with this show. As I was researching stuff about this, it turns out that Becky Bucket was not created by Aria. Instead, it was Black Central who made this show. Even though he voiced, animated, and hyped the fuck out of this show like crazy, Aria was not the creator. Because of this, I was thinking about skipping this show, but at the same time, when am I going to talk about Becky Bucket again? So, as a small bonus, I will cover this short episode. Here's an interesting thing about this show. I think this might be one of the first object shows that use the real life name for characters, rather than just object names. Although I think I might be wrong, so don't quote me on this. So how is this 2015 object show starts? By making fun of Justin Bieber. Bustin' Bieber released his new song, Apology. Yeah, I know, I'm a spoiled privilege kid with billions of dollars. But can't you understand that my life is hard? Of all things to make fun of Bieber, they picked a song that's actually not half bad. Don't give me that look. 
Regardless, Becky saw the views on this account and decided to get internet famous. So it is like second episode of Starfield, but more music centered. Then we have intro. Not only the music is bad, but the characters are acting like the complete opposites. In the beginning, Becky was more smiley and carefree, while Fred the Bell, yes, that's his name, was more serious one. In intro, Becky is more serious and Fred is more smiley. After that, they went to the music festival and OH MY FUCKING GOD LEAVE ME ALONE! Hey, that's a character that got million views from the latest video and is now homeless. I don't get it. They talked to some cowboy salary called Schmort, who has death written on his sight and a scar. Sounds like a musician to me. He was meant to perform, but his song was not appropriate enough for the festival. Was gonna perform at this here festival, but apparently my music is just too scary. And according to Lamb, sounds like the manifesto of a serial killer. By the way, I hate this hand animation in the show. It's not because it's bad or because it looks creepy. It is because the animation is not used properly. The head motion is waving, so it should be used to greet someone or maybe even seduce. In here, it is used as a quotation mark. Oh, Avivo? Avivo is an auto-generated YouTube music channel that overly censors pretty much everything. However, they generate millions of views. You know, the one that you use with only two fingers? After hearing that story, Dumb Bucket decided to take the alleged serial killer to their house, in the middle of nowhere, to record the song. Can we take you to our home, perfectly secluded, where nobody could hear us scream, to record a demo for our YouTube channel? Okay. This is the tale of a murder I committed. It happened last year and it isn't the first. I'm sure he's just telling a tale in his song. I assure you this isn't a lie, a tale or a fib. I really killed someone. The body of the person I killed is in my truck. After even more questionable things has been said from Schmort, he decided to sing a song. <clears throat> truckity doo, truckity dee, this is the tale of the people I killed. With guitar playing synth sounds. Once this decent song has been played, they decide to edit and upload it on YouTube, with Becky happily claiming that she gave the fucking serial killer a key to their house and their address. I'm just glad that man is out of our house. Why? He's like a new addition to the family. I even gave him a key to our house and our address on paper, just in case he ever wants to visit us again. Maybe it's just me, but I think Becky's an idiot. Once the video is uploaded, they got 5 million views and that's how episode ended. Fred, we hit it big. So, if you ever wanted to be famous, just record a song from a person that murdered someone and will automatically receive 5 million views. Seriously, how did they even do that out of nowhere? I don't think we'll ever know since the show got cancelled as they were planning to make, get this, a Becky Bucket movie. Potato of Awesome, the person behind the Object Show movie, made a trailer which showed that Becky Bucket went into a different direction. As in, they started smoking wheat. I don't think I need to say anything about it, don't I? It was originally meant to be released in 2016. However, according to the description, Vlog Central quit it after a few months. And that's the last we've ever heard of Becky Bucket. Or at least I thought. Since original YouTube trailer has been removed, I have been checking other sites for re-uploads, which I found it on Newgrounds. And during it, I've noticed the official Divian art for Becky Bucket. Remember when that site used to be good? During second episode production, Vlog Central was upset at people commenting that him and Area would cancel the show after only one episode. And he promised he would not cancel the series until they made one full season. They cancelled the show after one episode. He tried to make a return logo for 2017 and announced that Becky Bucket would make a grand return but no one cared. He came back in 2018 to respond to Hyven's comment from 2016. He responded to Aria's allegations and that was his last contribution to the show community. Wonder what he's doing now. <coughs> anyway, let's get back to the topic. A lot of people were excited about this show as again, it was something new and different and to this day, some people like this. I still don't find that show enjoyable. Well, aside from the song, it was just another 3 minutes of not funny jokes and characters being dumb. And I would say this, at least in Starfield, the episode about YouTube made much more sense. Uh, this show ain't no good. 
BFLD is the second most notable thing Area has done. Beside that thing he did at ObjectCon. Just like previous two shows, it was made in 2015. But unlike Starfield and Becky Bucket, the show went back to the classic formula of object shows. Competition. However, there was added a twist to the competition. There are no interesting background details about Battle for Object Destination. Heck, when I first saw the show, it came out of nowhere with no trailers or sneak peeks. Unless you removed it from YouTube and I have a selective memory. Look, I know I am stalling and all, but I really don't want to watch any more of Aria's shows. First episode titled Pyramid Scheme starts off with a quick pen of our 12 contestants. There's this podcast, but there's a reason for it. Unlike other competition shows, where contestants are getting eliminated in each episode, Battle for Object Destination will have no eliminations. At all. Instead, the show will be entirely team-based, meaning that the winners will be the team of six that accumulated the most points throughout the competition. This object show is going to differ from the norm a little bit, though. Unlike most object shows, there will be no elimination. Well, how would that work? I was getting to that. Instead of just a contestant winning object destination, a whole team is going to win. Anyways, each team has their own score which will carry out through future episodes. On paper, the idea doesn't sound half bad. Yes, it does remove one of the key aspects of competition shows, elimination. But it replaces it with the having all the contestants throughout the series. The issue I have though with this idea is that majority of the characters don't know each other. In the team-based reality shows like Amazing Race, Coach Trip, or scrap heap challenge, the teams are formed by groups of families, friends, co-workers, people sharing the same passion, and overall having something in common with each other. In here, there are six objects with nothing in common, against six objects with nothing in common. But it gets even worse than that. You know it's early days object show when it pokes fun of balance beam challenge. What? Don't we have to go through all that bullcrap about team captains, balance beam challenge, etc.? That is way too cliche for my tastes. And yes, I am guilty of that as well. But unlike Mr. Big Shot over here, Ty doesn't directly attack other shows and calling them cliche, while saying that he's too good for those challenges. Anyway, the teams will be picked by Adriel on one team and Susie on the other. Alphabet. Characters from A to L on one side and the rest on the other. I saw teams being picked by captains, challenge performance, gender, and candies. But Alphabet? That's kind of lame. And even then, you managed to fuck it up because there are several characters on the first team. Wait a second, isn't our team smaller than the other team? Huh? Button's team has 7 contestants, while our team only has 5. So, instead of making teams from A to K, and having Lamb join the other team, now called L to Z, we have Kendo joining the other team and ruining the names of the team. I'm stunned at how he managed to screw up something as easy as picking teams. But maybe contestants will be decent, right? I mean, we have to deal with them for the entire series, as they are no eliminations. So they better be entertaining. <laughs> she is a generic nice character. Always helpful, positive, doesn't want animals to die. Just very generic stuff. So, are you gonna do anything? Meh. Probably not. He seems to be the most sarcastic out of the bunch. Kind of like an element in Sanity's Nickel, but a little bit more rude and... No, no, no. We will get to that later. I can squish it, if need be. I guess he's supposed to be an evil character, but he comes out most as bipolar. One minute he screams, and the other he's acting normal. And the name, Color Die? Really? Couldn't he just be called Dice? You might say it's because of Aria's creativity and he didn't want to have a similar name of the characters from other notable shows. But if that was the case, then he wouldn't have Button, Candle, and most definitely... I was born a fast runner, what's wrong with that? He is bland. He makes fucking dollar from Object at War explode with charisma in comparison. Come on guys, we have to save everyone. Don't, like, go there. She is a valley girl. Guys, girls have more personalities than just valley type, you know. Key. Look guys, you made me a monster because you eliminated me. That's why you should vote for me! Key is a character that has a split personality, one of them being scaredy and the other being angry. Wait, that's key from challenge to win. My apologies, I got this mixed up. Let me try again. <clears throat> key is a character that has a split personality, one of them being scared and the other being angry. 
Wait, what the fuck? Oops, I squished it. He's an idiot that breaks stuff. Look, guys, if you want to blame the loss on anyone... The captain of the team, with the geekiest voice out of them all, despite being the most athletic of the bunch. Well, all's well that ends well. Bland. Just like the content of the picture's picture. Thanks for being there, man. You're a really good friend. Mousepad's friend. That, that's all I know about him. <laughs> Random character. Because the law requires one of them to be in every object show. You know, you could just put it on autopilot, right? The third wheel, pun intended, of the alliance between Mousepad and Sandpaper. And allegedly a smart one of the team. Yeah, this guy is pretty boring, if I say so myself. And as if the characters weren't bad enough, the audio in the first episode is atrocious. Whether it's characters sounding too quiet, Whatever. You don't have anything better to do. no background music where it's needed, Sandpaper. Yeah? Run! You said that already. Background music that is not suitable for a scene. So, what do we get for winning the challenge? You guys get one point. Or just bad voice acting in general. So, what's challenge one gonna be? Tell me or I'll kick you in the- In contrast, animations, backgrounds and props are decent for the most part. But now we have come to the worst part of it all. Writing. I am going to be honest with you all. The reason why it took me so long to make this review was because there was a scene so bad, so unfunny, that after watching it, I didn't want to finish the review. Or the episode for that matter. The writing in the very first episode is so bad that made me want to scrap this review. However, I made a promise to you that this will be my next video. So I will try to keep it. Even if I have to sacrifice my sanity. How bad the writing is? Well, just look at the next scene after the teams were picked. Ew. They like look like they came out of like an ogre's butt. The ogre's butt. Well, it's the best I could afford with this money. How much did you have? Negative two dollars. Where do I even begin with this? One, the human character that only shows up wants to say the ogre's butt, which I don't get why is that here since Gami already said the line. Two, the audio and the quote comes from the movie Quest for Camelot, which Ironically, it's like this show. Well animated, but with shit writing. That being said, why not have a character from the movie say it, rather than this abomination? 3. If this what he classifies as wrecked, then you can tell what kind of bad jokes we are going to get throughout the rest of the series. 4. I hate MLG jokes. They were never fun to begin with. 5. Even if it was funny at the time, it will make your show dated with that kind of humor. I mean. Who else does MLG jokes in 2015? Isn't that cannibalism? Because cannibals are scrubs. Oh yeah, this idiot does. I think this is my biggest gripe with this show. The jokes either make no sense or are only dated for this period in time. I don't mind memes, I like them. But when you put the meme in your show in the time when it was funny, it might give you a laugh at the start, but when you are rewatching it in a few years, you just cringe at it. Yeah, this joke really annoyed me. And we are barely filming to the first episode. And trust me, it doesn't get better. After we are done with 30 seconds of unfunny jokes, fun gets to... We're going to be taking a plane trip to Egypt. I have all your tickets right here. I don't know because I can't hear shit. But then we get to the plane where we have the same issues as in the last scene. Bad audio editing. It's so nice of you. Enough with dated jokes. And who in the name of Cory in the house is gonna fly the plane? You see the struggle I have to go through to make these reviews? Halfway through, the plane arrives at Egypt, where the challenge is to get to the top of the pyramid. For someone who says this show is in cliché, he sure picked another quite cliché challenge. Going to the top of something. Apparently there are animals and traps along the way. But I couldn't hear it due to low audio. But there's a cat. Desert enemies like javelinas, scorpions and alpacas. Alpacas? Mousepad and sandpaper are an animation that we are going to see multiple times. When they are suddenly attacked by... The hell are these? Guess we will never know since we have POV of a dollar lifting us and kid going insane. WHAT DID YOU JUST SAY TO ME?! Back to these two clowns, where they are now attacked by the scorpion, and just listen to this beautiful voice acting. 
There's a scorpion on my leg! Get it off, get it off, get it off! After that, more bizarre dialogues and unfunny jokes. Candle, you don't have to run. This isn't a race, you know. Um, yeah it is. Oh, uh, right. The challenge ends with the classic climax music, which was sadly changed to generic rock. <laughs> Dollar won the point for his team, and the episode ended with... More about dialogues between Mousepad and Sandpaper. Thanks for being there, man. You're a really good friend. You too. Next episode starts with Aria telling his viewers to not seal his views. Then we have recap, intro, and the title card. Which I forgot to mention that this show is one of the first ones to use title cards in the episodes. And honestly, I like the idea. And I'm glad that it's still implemented by people who are not perverted. Mousepad, Sandpaper, and Will say to come out with a strategy. AKA, Alliance. Well, I think we should take advantage of my quick wittedness and your guys' speediness and form an alliance. I mean, as much as people nag on alliances and object shows being overdone, at least they kind of make sense in the elimination style show. But in here, one of the two teams wins! And there's no elimination! So having an alliance in this scenario is useless. Speaking of annoying tropes, the show just added four more characters out of the blue. All of them just as forgettable as the main cast. We have Anchor the Pirate, Paranoid Bag, Shy Crystal, and Magazine from Object Terror. Come to think of it, this whole scene feels like the scene from Object Terror. Including the music! Now, before we start, I'd like to introduce four new contestants. Great. More of you will be annoyed by. I eat donuts. But before we get to that, I would like to introduce five new contestants. Wait, five new contestants? Yep. Okay, does anyone have a role? Hey, another bad MLG jokes followed about with. Oh, you son of a bitch! That's my joke! The next challenge is to make an invention of this pile of junk. Suddenly, the weather cleared and we have even more obnoxious conversation. Moving on, I think we should build a giant statue of me! Let him talk. Screw you. Why are you even on this team? Your name starts with a C. Ladies, ladies, you're both pretty! Thank you. Um, we're both guys, not girls. I can dream, mouse pad. Nothing interesting happened for the rest of the episode, except for a crazy bag who is no longer crazy or paranoid, building the alarm clock that plays Here's how the story goes with another meme. And Color Dyke broke the thing. At the end, the M and Z won the challenge by making refillable ice cream cone. And the episode ends with another gag that I, I don't understand. I love the fun that is used on the cone, but it should be Mario Luigi too. Um, wh where did you come from? Well, I just wanted to be here, so I am! Oh god, that voice! At least we are halfway through the series. From episode 3, both assets and audio quality has rapidly improved. Same thing cannot be said about the inside jokes writing. Wait, we're back? I thought this whole thing was shamelessly cancelled because he was demotivated or something. Yeah, that didn't age well. Why would do? Why? Next challenge is Truth or Dare, where they have to pick a contestant and he has to pick either a confession or a dare. Sounds simple, yet it took over 2 minutes to explain the challenge. Mostly because of this unfunny scene. The contestant's box contains... Let me just take a wild guess. An anchor, a button, a candle, a colored dye. A dollar, a duffel bag, a stick of gum, a key, a lamp, a magazine, a mouse pad, a piece of sandpaper, a soup can, and a tire. And as if this show didn't have enough outdated jokes, we have a fucking Harambe jokes. Who are you? I'm Harambe. Wait, but aren't you supposed to be a gorilla or something? Whatever, you aren't even on the show. Why are you interrupting? This was the part where the channel was supposed to say something MLG, but the meme died. So yeah. Harambe! So, they replace one dead meme with another. Can't believe it's a second review featuring Harambe. Hey, you shouldn't treat a fine gorilla like Harambe like that! But he's not even a- Wait, are we seriously arguing whether or not Harambe is a gorilla? Ah oh man, this show is going downhill faster than your chances of getting a girlfriend in the next five years- Well anyway- Okay, that was an okay joke. This is a boring challenge. Nothing interesting happens until Kendall was meant to shove Gummy off the building. And he refused. Because, for some reason, Candle's personality flipped 180 degrees. He went from selfish, sarcastic prick to... nice person. Your safety is more important than winning. Our safety and well-being is more important than anything. This resulted in Ace getting another point. I seem to be rushing through this episode, but... 
That's because there's nothing interesting that happened in here. Only notable things are bad jokes. Actually, I've gaslit you all, because there's one memorable scene in this show. Right after the credits episode 3, we have this gem of the scene. Be completely honest here. Are you crushing on Gummy? Uh, no. I'm gay. I have a crush on someone else. When this came out, pun intended, people in the community were memeing this scene. And it's nothing wrong with the characters being gay or coming out as gay, but this felt very rushed and out of nowhere. Plus, it doesn't help when the candle's voice actor was also outed as a douche. On to the final episode, which has part 1 in the title. A good sign. Episode starts with a useless, unfunny, and unwanted alliance meeting. Well, maybe it's because... You got us up here at 2.15 in the morning! An alliance always has to be its sharpest! <sighs> this is ass. Fun also announced the new system to spice up the game called Rewards and Retributions. I should give him a credit since the idea itself isn't half bad. However, this is the last episode of the series, so I don't give a shit. All you need to know is that the object with the lowest amounts of votes gets the penalty, while the one with the most votes gets rewards. Got it? Good. And also, I had nothing to do with this. Tyre received a punishment in form of blindness. What? I guess you could say... Oh no, you aren't going there. <laughs> I guess you could say it's pretty... Don't say it, sandpaper. EXHAUSTED! Huh? Get it? It's because he's a tire and he's supposed to be in a car and cars have exhaust pipes. Oh. Also, he's tired and that's funny wordplay because he's a tire. SANDPAPER! Fuck these jokes, man! Anyway, Candle wins the GPS that will be used in the next challenge. Find the teleporting crystal. Lame. Then he broke their fake DS or something, I don't know. But that's how the episode ended. Not even the cliffhanger or anything. It ended like this. I've had enough of this. Can we please just start a fire here and keep walking in the morning? Maybe if it stops your belly aching. Fuck me, this is the most obnoxious show I've ever seen in a while. It has that, look at me, I'm better than those shows type energy. When you are making a show, and you put down other shows in your object show. So, who do you think is going to be eliminated next episode? You really don't know what's going on, do you? Nope. Even though you are awful in many, many, many departments, that doesn't make your show good. It makes you look like a dick. And yes, I'm guilty of that as well with Last Object Standing. But at least I didn't say the shows doing it outright suck. Heck! The Forbidden Show also had that part talking about bad aspects of certain object shows, such as alliances and balance beams. You know which one I'm talking about. But even then, it made sense plot-wise. In here, he just disrespects other creators' work. While the animation is good and audio and visuals have improved significantly, the writing is still atrocious. The jokes are ranging from unfunny to cringeworthy, the characters are one-dimensional, especially those four debuters, who could have been gone from episode 2 and nothing, and I mean, nothing would be different. And the concept itself, which was a good on paper, but was poorly executed in the first few minutes of the first episode. Battle for Object Destination is, without a doubt, the worst show area has ever created. At least the only way is up from here. The hell was that? Man, your son just fell down the stairs! Well, quiet! Instead of getting part 2 episode 2, we have been greeted with a show that will be a part of a, a new era, Earthquake. It's time to break the mold and shatter expectations with EARTHQUAKE! The show hasn't even started and the area already has a big ego about it. There were two trailers for the series shown, one where Flip got kidnapped, yes that's his name, and the one with the q and I've noticed a new animation style which is the instinct and overall, not so bad. Although, a bit choppy. But how does the episode fare? Lore-wise, this takes place after episode 4, meaning that he got kidnapped somewhere in Austria. He wakes up with 5 more jabronis. Why am I calling them that? Because we don't get to hear their names, their personalities, aside from maybe one or two characters, their backgrounds, nothing. Come on, this is the first episode. Give us seriously to give a shit about these characters. So, the cast of nobodies are awake, when suddenly, 
a speaker box announced that they have been captured somewhere near Japan and they have a few days to escape this place or else the island will be destroyed by the earthquake. Why by earthquake? Cause it turns out that the earthquake is in fact Japanese game show. How's this game show works? Well, it's hard to tell because I can tell what the fuck the announcer is saying. Box on an island that's going to be torn apart by a horrible earthquake in four days. And if these buffoons don't solve 15 grueling puzzles in that time, the land below them will be ripped apart while they're still in the box and they'll plummet towards their doom. If it wasn't for the visuals, I would be completely stuck with this review. In short, they have to solve 15 puzzles to escape. Got it? Good. This is annoying. I don't want to praise this guy because what he did is inexcusable, but the concept is actually good. So far this is the best thing he made, but we have to remember that the bar is set really, really low. Heck, even the intro is good looking, but the music is dreadful. Is using Minecraft blocks for music? So the first puzzle is them being stuck in an orange juice tank and their job is to pass the key to the next person before they run off the oxygen. I don't understand how any of this works or how is it all connected. And they did the challenge without any issues whatsoever and the episode ended. Yep, that, that's how the show ended and we all know why. But let's judge this by the pilot alone. Does it make you want to watch more of this in the future? Honestly, I have mixed feelings. The premise of the show is fantastic and I would like to continue without areas involvement, to see what other puzzles and traps would contain. At the same time, I have to remember who wrote this series. While Earthquake didn't have any terrible jokes, or any jokes for that matter... But the water will electrocute me! Me too! It'll make me diluted! <laughs> okay, okay, I'll turn it into orange juice! There we go! Thank you! That's better! <laughs> He did a real bad job at introducing new characters, not giving them any names, personalities, or backstories. Sure, you might say he might have done it in the next episode, but as we've seen in the previous show, he is not good at it. Besides that, this show is possible. It's not the worst thing ever created, but not something that could be shared with praise. And hopefully that was his last contribution to Object Show community. If I don't upload anything again for like 6 months, this review will be the reason why. The right again you know, Starfield, Becky Bucket, Battle for Object Destination, and occasionally an earthquake is so bad, it hurts. All of these shows had great potential that was wasted overall. The ideas are there, but they are not executed well properly. Case in point, few years later we've got EEE Shores, which were miles better than Starfield, as well as Mother Objects, which put Becky Bucket to shame, and to my knowledge, no one did anything similar to the earthquake, but maybe we will see in the future. BFOD had this an idea, but again, the execution of it was terrible from the start. Team OD shows could work if teammates knew each other, which is why this idea worked better in Town Attack, a team-based competition similar to Amazing Race. But if everyone sees each other for the first time, it's hard to root for a team, which consists of half of people being nice and the other half being miserable. Earthquake also had potential, but again, it ended too soon for me to say if it was wasted. However, during this period, these shows develop another awful trait. Arrogance. It's cool thinking that your own show is good and you are proud of it. It's not cool to downplay other shows and say that your show starts a new era of object shows, when in reality, it did nothing. And now, for the worst trait of these shows. Writing. Comedy is very subjective. Some enjoy slapstick, some enjoy puns, some enjoy edgy stuff, but I have never, and I mean ever, seen such a bad attempt at comedy in all of these shows combined. Out of all of these shows, I only laughed once, and that was due to Whoop Doo's delivery. Even if you ignore the bad comedy, you can't ignore the bad characters writing. There's another pattern I've seen through the timeline. Everyone is one-dimensional, not developed, poorly developed, or just stupid. One positive I'll give it though, is that at least it showcased some talented animators and voice actors, despite awful voice mixing. But other than that, Area has made some really awful shows that were even bad before he committed his heinous crimes, and I'm glad that he would, this would be the last time I will ever have to mention his name ever again. 
And no, he will not get a special ending. Animation area is my name. BFOD is what brought me fame. But there's much more than know about me. I jerk off the hiccups at the hour of free. I jizz and come to the sound of burps. The people that judge me are just twerps. I come every day, January to December, and that is because I'm a Noah C member.